Itzy's recent releases have undeniably sparked mixed reactions among casual listeners and their fan base. For about two years now, the group has found themselves stuck in this weird place, grappling with an identity crisis while other new groups continue to build momentum with their releases, displaying great musical ability and bold artistic vision. Although Itzy have bore the brunt of criticism, they aren't the only group under JYP struggling with their identity. Many groups and artists that came before and after them within the agency have hit many road bumps, both in terms of concept and sound, as they navigate their complex musical journey. NMIX and TWICE have recently undergone noticeable shifts in their sound and concept that can be perceived as jarring or striking. The road to self-discovery isn't the easiest thing in the world, especially if your initial identity is solely derivative of something or somebody else, completely based on whatever is currently trending. While I have previously touched upon this topic on my channel, it continues to be a topic of interest to me. Therefore, I wanted to dedicate an entire video to this topic, especially considering the upcoming releases from these groups and the considerable criticism they have already faced. Itzy has recently unveiled the music video for Bet On Me, a b-side track from their forthcoming mini album Kill My Doubt. From what I've seen, it's garnered a mixed reaction among the public. As expected, diehard fans have embraced the release and eagerly consumed the content as usual because they'll eat up anything. On the other hand, some listeners have found the release to be just okay, lacking a strong impact. Meanwhile, there are those who openly express their dislike for the track, specifically the showcase of vocal and rap abilities, as well as the unfamiliar look and sound. If you want to know my opinion on it, I think it was fucking horrible. And and those girls should never sing or rap again like I've always said. Stick to the talk singing and sing rapping for me. But anyway, this wasn't the only aspect of the comeback I've seen discussed among fans. The entire K-pop fandom was traumatized by the events surrounding Sneakers and Checkmate, so it only makes sense that with every release since, people have questioned the reliability of the teasers and spoilers. Every time I see a new ITZY concept photo or announcement, the comments will be flooded with, let's pray it's not another Sneakers. Additionally, I've seen people talk about ITZY's image, which inspired this video. The pushback of the criticisms against Itzy in this specific area was interesting to see. Essentially, people are pushing for Itzy to be able to experiment with or change their concept and sound without facing backlash. And you already know why I take issue with that stance. It's no secret that Itzy's recent releases have generated polarizing responses, evoking both positive and negative reactions from listeners. Itzy has been stuck in this weird place since the release of Guess Who in 2021, where their identity crisis began. Since then, Itzy have struggled in attempting to shift their musical and conceptual directions while still holding on to the familiar as they mature, grow, and develop. It is worth noting that this cycle of change, going back and forth, has been happening since 2021. Not only were the girls less than two years into the career, Careers, but some of the members were barely in their 20s, while Yuna was literally still a toddler. There was genuinely no need or justification for them to begin this shift. While I acknowledge the potential short shelf life of girl groups in this industry, we need to be a bit more reasonable in this discussion. ITZY is a highly successful girl group from a renowned company within the industry. The landscape of K-pop has evolved beyond the eras of first and second generation girl groups. We've seen more and more idols renew their contracts or at least remain active in their respective groups. Time is absolutely on their side and they have ample opportunity to explore and evolve without rushing. Also, seven years is a long time. Girl be calm. The issue a lot of people have with Itzy's maturity is that it's boring. In their efforts to introduce this new look and sound, Itzy takes a minimalist and chic approach, ditching the elements of youth in their image. This is evident in releases like Guess Who, Cheshire, and possibly Kill My Doubt, some of their most boring and forgettable releases yet. This has always been my issue with this topic. Ultimately, the interpretation of what is considered mature or youthful is subjective and often influenced by personal preferences and cultural norms. Still, people often fail to recognize that maturity in regards to sound, style, and concept can also be dynamic, vibrant, and engaging. It is possible for artists to exhibit signs of growth and development while still retaining the energy and spark that define them. They can evolve and explore new territories without losing their unique essence. Maturity should not be equated with the absence of creativity, fun, and boldness, as individuals can exhibit a sense of maturity while still embracing and expressing their vibrant and lively nature. A group that's currently doing that, even though sometimes it can be very rocky and inconsistent, consistent is La Seraphim. I think their anti-fragile era does a good job at showing a mature side of the girls while still being fun. That's not to say that they haven't tried though. ITZY has indeed made attempts in the past to develop and evolve upon their image, both conceptually and sonically. This was evident in releases such as It's Me, Not Shy, and Crazy in Love, where they showcased a maturation of their sound and concept while still preserving elements of their signature style. However, the tracks pale in comparison to their previous releases. I found many of the tracks 
tracks released on Not Shy and Crazy in Love to be watered down interpretations of their triumphant 2019 releases. A lot of the tracks were filler and didn't display their full range of ability. Overall, JYP Entertainment's struggles with artist development have held ITZY back. They were once innovative leaders of fourth gen K-pop but now struggle to keep us content and entertained. Still, with their solid fan base, they don't have to. Like I mentioned, they're wildly successful and will continue to be, but that don't mean that the music can't and won't be shit. Like. With their debut, NMIX aimed to distinguish themselves from their peers by introducing mixed pop to the industry. This innovative and never-done-before concept allowed them to transcend the limitations of musical genres, seamlessly merging two or more styles into a singular sound. Within a span of less than a year, the group completely abandoned this concept, starting with Funky Glitter Christmas, and have continued on that path ever since. Despite efforts from their fandom to convince us that they emerged victorious in the I Don't Give a Fuck war, NMIX has remained on this road to departure from their initial concept. And Mix completely lost the plot, but I'm glad that they did. Remember earlier when I mentioned that JYP tends to trend hop and creates groups completely derivative of other well-known and successful groups? It's been pretty blatant in the past, but with this one, it was crazy on so many levels. It was ridiculous for them to try to build their brand on mixed pop, a concept that was notably popularized by SM Entertainment, especially with Espa's recent successes with Next Level and Savage. The nerve, the audacity, the unmitigated gall, it still blows my mind on both sides. Unfortunately for NMIX, their concept of genre combining wasn't as well received as those previously mentioned. It was very bad for them in 2020, let's just say that. I'm torn on whether or not I'm upset at their change. On one hand, their music and concepts have noticeably improved but i can't help but wish they had made a better effort to do justice by the concept and create something that doesn't feel incoherent and unfinished. Nevertheless, NMIX continues to lack a distinct and definitive. Their recent releases, including Funky Glitter Christmas, Expergo, and A Midsummer NMIX's Dream, display a tendency to draw inspiration from other groups while simultaneously exhibiting a scattered approach that lacks cohesion. Given the success of Ditto earlier this year and the rising popularity of electronic dance genres such as house, garage, and drum and bass in K-pop and other mainstream industries, largely attributed to artists like Pink Panthers, it is interesting interesting to see Enmix venture into this realm of music and explore their own takes on these styles. Kind of the JYP way though, we expected it. That's not to say that it's not bad or that I'm complaining. Bitch, I'm just watching and taking note. That's all. Like, that's all. But I have seen people make that connection. Also, I saw people calling Roller Coaster or Promise 9 Reject in a negative way. Please watch your tone before this message self-destructs. Still, the group lost the plot for better or for worse. I've given up all hope when it comes to TWICE since Eyes Wide Open. It's become increasingly clear that TWICE or JYP have become more interested in the American market, leading to a change in their sound and image. This had been in the works for some time before the release of I Can't Stop Me. Twice had been gradually maturing their sound since Fancy. I've never been mad at this endeavor as it brought us some of their best and most cohesive work yet. However, I can't help but notice certain parallels between ITZY and Twice. While I have my favorites like Taste of Love, Formula of Love, and well, that's actually pretty much it, a significant portion of their recent releases have been rather they're unremarkable. Consistent, yes, but very lacking. I don't think they've put in the effort to take trending concepts and genres and infuse them into Twice's unique charm. In their pursuit of a more sophisticated and chic image, they have shifted away from their previously bright and colorful identity, adopting a more subdued approach. Still, there have been occasional attempts to expand upon their sound and image while remaining somewhat true to their roots. Between 1 and 2, Formula of Love and Taste of Love do a decent job at this, in my opinion. Still, with the releases of Ready to Be, the Misamo unit, and the upcoming Jihyo solo, I am simply not impressed, not intrigued, not interested, I'm bored. Somewhere along the way, we lost the plot. All in all, we need a family meeting at JYP headquarters. I truly want better for my sisters, I do. Anyway, that's all. Thank you for watching. Let me know your opinions down below. Bye!